Hello, everybody, and welcome. <clears throat> I'm glad we can come together and to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have conquered sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you open your heart of divine mercy to shower us with your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sales, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our response is, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord, Lord, for He is good, good and His love is, is everlasting. everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. But the Lord has this been, by the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith, we who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we celebrate uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, and um, it's it's a great time of uh, of rejoicing in the church, and all around us this time of year we have uh, we have signs of things opening up, signs of things getting nicer and warmer. Um, as you could hear, we had the ice cream truck that just went by before the gospel, and I learned that you cannot remember the tune of the Alleluia while the ice cream truck tune is in your head. 
Um, but we have so many great uh, things that happen. And I know even on, on a personal note, um, you know, I got my, my vaccine shots. And so I was able to go home and sit in the same room as my dad for the first time in, in more than a year and just watch some sports. We watched a little bit of golf. And then the other night, we had a chance to watch the Phillies play. And it's nice to know, like with my dad, that even after all that time, he picks up right where he left off when we watched the Phillies game together, which is that he complains about our baseball team from the national anthem through every pitch the whole game. And uh, we even, uh, I, I had the TV on, on mute um, because our announcers cannot compete. So I thought, well, I can't have the both of them going. And my sister said that. She said, well, are you going to put the sound on or are you just going to listen to his, his complaining? And I said, I think I'm going to listen to his complaining because there's no mute button for that. My mom, I kind of remembered this from years ago. She would make matters worse, though. When he was complaining about the Phillies or the Eagles or, or whatever it would be, uh, she, who really did not care very much one way or the other about the sports, would just look at him and say, well, don't complain. They meant well. And that was not helping at all, because that would make him more mad. You know, they mean well. They stink. They stink. And I have to say, the other night, I was really tempted while he was complaining to look over and say, they meant well, just to see what would happen. But, you know, that kind of a thing when you're watching sports, to think that the players mean well, it may not, it may not help a lot. But in so many other aspects of life, it really does. To be people who can look at others and to recognize the, their goodness, and despite all of the faults and failings and all the things that are wrong, to be able to look and recognize that they're loved by God, that there is something really redeeming in them. And that is so much of what we celebrate on this Divine Mercy Sunday. We celebrate the overflowing, overabundant love of God. You've probably seen that image of Jesus with the two rays coming out of his heart, the red and the blue, symbolizing baptism and the fire of his love, but also symbolizing his overwhelming mercy. Jesus had every opportunity when he appears in today's gospel after the resurrection to see the apostles and to do nothing but complain about how they did on Good Friday, which was not very good. Uh, he could complain to Thomas about his, his doubting. He could complain about so many things. And despite all of the weaknesses of the apostles, his first words, peace be with you. Despite all of the things that he could say to Thomas, he doesn't yell at him. He says again, peace be with you. Here, have your doubts removed. Put your hand, put your fingers. Don't be unbelieving, but believe. He doesn't yell at him. And even more than anything, after Thomas says, my Lord and my God, Jesus speaks mercifully to us as well. Blessed are those who have not seen, but have believed. Jesus is, is looking at us, not because we're perfect, not because we have everything together, but looking at us because we believe and gives us his blessing because of that. I pray that on this Divine Mercy Sunday that we can recognize and receive the great love and great mercy that God has for us and realize it's because of our faith that we're open to that blessing. And then look at one another. Look at, look at those, especially the ones that can drive us crazy. And maybe you don't have to say they meant well, but maybe you can at least look at them, know they are loved, and know they are God's children as well, and share with them the mercy of our Lord.
And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us present to the Lord in peace the prayers and petitions that we offer today. We pray for our church, our parish, and the church all around the world that our Easter celebration may make us a community united in faith prayer and the breaking of the bread, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations and peoples, and especially those suffering oppression, that the gift of God's peace may be theirs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. We pray for those who are recovering. We pray for those who are, because of our ongoing t pandemic, unable to move about and, and to be free. And we pray for all those who care for them, that they may bring healing to the lives of one another with compassion and care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, and especially those who are close to us and to our families, that they may be reborn in the life of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we now commend our own prayers and those that we hold in our hearts to the mercy of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant us your peace. And in your great mercy, hear the prayers we offer. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is the time when um, Catholics, when they're able to come to Mass, are able to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And I know it's the most difficult time for those who can't physically come to Mass uh, because they can't receive in the sacrament our Lord. So what the Church asks us to do is to make a, a spiritual communion, which means that we unite our, our desire for the Lord to the desire that Jesus has to be with us. And we believe that when we pray, asking the Lord to come to us, that he does come in a very special way into our hearts and souls. So let's make our prayer of spiritual communion now. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, Spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. And of course, you know, this week is Divine Mercy Sunday. And 3 o'clock on Divine Mercy Sunday is the sacred hour. And if you can spend some time in prayer um, during that hour, I think our Lord blesses that richly. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week.